Hello everyone, this is Charles here from Mellotone Kits, and today we're going to start off the build series of the GU58 watt monoblock amplifier kit. And before we get started here, I just want to give a big welcome and thank you to all of our test kit builders. You know who you are, and if it wasn't for your help, we wouldn't be able to get these kits out the door, as nice as they are. Alright. So in this video series, I am going to be building kit number one, and that's going to become the build manual for all of you. I know everybody's anxious to jump in and get building, but to make the build go smoothly, we're going to do a little bit of organization first, but I promise we'll get to it soon. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the amplifier and give it a general, or give you a general overview, so we know what we're talking about at every step of the way. So here's the top view. Right over here we've got the um, Hammond 373X power transformer. That's that big guy right here. This is our output transformer. In the middle we have our standard power switch. It might be a little hard to see on camera. Let me see. There we go. This is our main filter capacitor. Here is our RCA in, and this is our driver tube, the 6N6P, in a 9-pin socket, and this is our power tube, the GU50, in its specialized 7-pin socket. All this is mounted to this top aluminum plate, and the plate is mounted in this cherry wood plinth. Let's take a look at the back here. Okay, so on the back, we have our standard IEC inlet. This is your power supply input with a built-in fuse holder. And we have our speaker jack outputs here. Now, on this prototype number two, we only have two outputs. And that's because we were switching back and forth between the 8 ohm and the 4 ohm tap on the output transformer. On your production kit and on kit number one that I have here, there's going to be three of these. There's going to be the zero ohm tap, a four ohm tap, and an eight ohm tap. And that way you don't have to mess around with switching out wires if you change the speakers that you're using. Let's take a look on the inside here. I'm just going to gently rest it. There we go. Oh, let's try and get that on frame. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, this is prototype number two. So one thing to, to be aware of is that there are some small differences between this and kit number one. We've made some small improvements and I'll make sure to note them along the way if there's something that's different here. But we're just using prototype number two as reference material. Anytime we're working on a specific part, I'm going to bring this out on camera and I'll show you what the finished result should look like. Let's go to the back here and take a look at the circuit. Over here we have the output from the output transformer going to those two jacks which will be three on your version. We have your power switch and here's the lines coming in from the IEC input going into the power transformer. There's a little hole right here that's where the power transformer wires go through. This is a filament transformer specifically for the GU50. This is our power supply board. Note that this is using the newest version of our power supply that allows us to take several different outputs off of it. So this is, uh, prototype 2 is actually a little bit different from prototype 1 in that prototype 1 used our earlier version of this board. It's also using this 159P choke. It's pretty chunky. Here's our RCA input with the signal cable going into our driver board. And this is the 6N6P driver. It comes through the board, out over here after the amplification, and then over to the GU50 input on the grid. This of course is the GU50 socket. And it looks a little bit complicated in here. But this circuit is actually incredibly simple. 
And we're going to take a look at the schematic in a little bit here to give you a better idea of what's going on. Out from the GU50 comes this orange wire right here. And this is the output transformer. And the other side of it is going into the power board because, of course, the output transformer acts as a power plate resistor for the GU50. That's where the load is coming for the tube. So the power goes through the output transformer and then back to the plate of the GU50. We have a tag strip here. We have a grounding point here. Another grounding point over here. And let me see, what else should I point out to you? Yes. Okay, so on the power supply board we have our choke inputs and C2, which is our big filter cap that we just took a look at on the top of the plate. It comes through the plate and around to the back to here. Okay, so that is our first look at the amplifier as it's completed. Let's move on to the schematics and the information sheet. Okay, so in your package you should have a yellow folder that contains all of the build documentation. Let's take a quick look at it. First we have this lovely letter with your kit serial number and some basic advice. I'm not going to read all of it to you, but we'll give you a quick summary. First, we recommend that you watch each build video before building that section of the amplifier. Next, we recommend that if you are tired or distracted, you should pause the build and come back to it when you're fresher and more focused. Be prepared to take your time and do it right. Troubleshooting dumb mistakes that could have been avoided takes far longer than doing it right the first time. Of course, if you run into any issues with your build, come and check out the forums at valvesandmore.com. You can also email us at valvesandmore at protonmail.com. We love the forums because over time they're going to become a repository of practical advice and tips and tricks when it comes to building these kits. But don't be afraid to reach out to us directly if you need some extra help. And of course, we want you all to have fun. The first objective here is building a great sounding amp, but we also want to have fun while we're doing it. Okay, let's see what's next here. Ah, the spec sheet. Okay, there's a lot of detail on here that we can go through later, but to sum it up, the GU50 has great input sensitivity, high power output at 8.29 watts, which is great for a single tube running in pure class A, and it has high linearity with low distortion. If you're careful and follow my instructions, then your amplifier should meet these specs. We've also included a sweep and distortion graph showing just how linear it is. Oh, let me see if I can get that in frame. So it's very flat, there's very low deviation or very little deviation. You will see a little bit of a bump right here. Let me see if I can get that on camera. And funny enough, what that is is something that shows up in all of our sweeps. And we think it's actually something from the local military base here. It's some sort of frequency that we always pick up on everything. Uh, we haven't been able to eliminate it. It happens no matter where we're doing our testing. But even that little deviation is only, I think it's less than a quarter of a dB. It's ridiculously small. Here we have our distortion graph. We have our signal up here, this is at 0 dB relative. And down here we have each of the different harmonics and the general noise floor. So this is the general noise floor. And the red line that's just below it is the second harmonic. And the second harmonic, for the most part, is good. It helps fill in the sound. We think it adds something to the sound and gives things a really great tube sound to things. And we want the odd harmonics, the even, sorry, we want the even harmonics, not the, the odd ones. The odd ones are the ones that we don't want, third harmonics and other ones like that. And the third, you can see, is this yellow line right here. It goes up higher as we get into the low frequencies, which is pretty normal. And it's about even with the second harmonics, but it very quickly drops off. 
and this is this is the one K line right here, and it drops right down past the noise floor into this, even before it hits one K. So that's really good. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So next up, we have schematics, and we're going to be referring back to these constantly at each part of the build, at the start of each. Uh, build segment we're going to review what part of this we're going to build and whenever we're doing our testing of voltages we're going to be writing it right onto here. Now I know this might be a little intimidating for some of you that have never worked with schematics before and maybe don't understand any of this but we're going to walk you through it step by step every bit of the way and by the time you're done the kit you should have a much better understanding of how the circuit works and how to read these schematics so that you can make use of them. After the power supply schematic, we have the amplifier schematic. And the same thing goes as the power supply schematic. We'll refer to it whenever we're going to be building that part of the, of the amplifier. And we'll be writing our voltages on here whenever, it's, uh, whenever we're doing the testing. The last things we should have are a bill of materials or parts list. Let me zoom out a little bit here. This is going to detail all the parts that you have in your kit, and it'll be good to reference if you're stuck with something. You'll notice that some of the parts have a plus and a number on the end, such as fuse 2 plus 2 here. What that means is that we've included two extra fuses in case there's an issue and you blow some. There are other parts that are like that that are either small and easy to lose or possibly could get damaged while you're working with them and we've tried to include extra parts in all those situations and of course we've included extra wire and heat shrink so hopefully by the time you're done this build if everything goes well you should have extra parts and wire and heat shrink left over but in case something goes wrong it's going to be there for you okay so that ends the first episode of the GU50 build series. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.